Welcome to the Michael Cooley podcast on rethinking leadership. In these episodes, we will look at leadership with a fresh perspective and take your leadership effectiveness to the next level. For more information, go to cooleyinstitute.com and follow Michael's continuous learning insights on social media. Leadership does not change. Leadership is leadership. 10,000 years ago, maybe 50,000 years ago, 100,000 years ago, today and 100,000 years from now, maybe, it will always be the same. As long as human nature is the same, leadership will not change. Because what's leadership? Leadership is about mobilizing people so that they can survive in a challenging and continuously changing life and environment in a life that's com complicated and complex and so that they can grow have a better life prosper live in abundance and the same challenges existed how far do you want to go? 100,000 years ago, when people started living as families, when we started living as families, which is the smallest unit of life, leadership was necessary. Because every family 100,000 years ago, 200,000 years ago, woke up every day with one purpose. How do we stay alive today as a family? And to do that, we have to eat, we have to drink, we have to protect ourselves from danger, from wildlife, from weather, and maybe from the attacks of other families or tribes. So that required mobilization. That required somebody to mobilize the family so that it can act in a way to stay alive in this challenging environment. Because the group had to work together. It wasn't one person alone. For a family to, to survive, jobs and tasks and responsibilities had to be spread. The children, the father and the mother, and if it's a greater family, the relatives, the grandparents, uncles, aunts, if they were living in a small tribe. They had to act as one unit. And for that, they need to distribute tasks so that they can survive. And they can hunt, and they can fight, and they can deter and repel attackers and enemies from other tribes so that mobilization of people so that they can face their challenges their difficulties solve their problems requires that's that's what leadership is about that requires an act of leadership now let's take it one step further the act that also requires that you mobilize people so that they can improve their situation if they move if they're living in a let's say small cave they can make it a big cave if they have food for i don't know two three days they can have food for six months if they are uh, wearing uh, you know horrible clothes maybe they can wear better clothes about improvement of life so the improvement of life that i call growth this part also needs mobilization this is an act of leadership because life is about two things about survival and growth and both of them needs mobilization because need both of them needs collective effort effort at the level of you know society or community clear now that the same the same dynamic apply today in our generation now we have difficulties we don't have the same kind of difficulties we had 100,000 years ago, maybe not all of us in terms of not having enough food, not having a home to, to, uh, you know, to use as shelter, although maybe millions of people still have problems of not having food and shelter and fresh water. But in general, for you know, around 8 billion people or so, this problem is solved. And in many cases, we have abundance of food. So we don't have the same kind of problems we had in the past, but we have other kind of problems. We still have wars. We still have fighting, we still have competition. And definitely life became much more complicated, much more complex 
definitely. We've used technology to increase resources or to make better use of the resources, but there is competition now on resources because you have around 8 billion people who also want a house, who also want a good life. They want a car, they want a TV, they want a microwave, they want a laptop, they want you know, washing machine, they want to travel, they want to go on vacations, they want to secure the jobs of their kids, they want to be rich. They have the same, they have the same demands like you do. So that there's more competition. So my point is, every generation had its own challenges to survive and to grow and in the future move 10,000 years from now life will be definitely different but if human nature remained the same we will also have similar kinds of problems similar kind in terms of survival problems and growth and prosperity challenges we will have those unless human life human nature changes now, technology will be different, the complexity of life will be different, it might be worse or better, I don't know. But the fundamentals of us sleeping, waking up in the morning, thinking how do we eat and sleep and take care of our kids and, you know, making sure that the future is safe and secure, taking care of our health, managing our relationships, will all be the same. Competition will be the same in some way or form. I don't know if we will overcome war, but there will be fight, uh, fighting and war. I hope not, but as long as human nature is the same, the basic fundamentals of what we do, how we live will be the same. That's why leadership will be the same also in the future. That will not change. It is our responsibility now to learn from the lessons of the past so that we don't repeat unnecessary mistakes, solve as many of problems as possible, maximize our opportunities, make sure that we don't hand over to the next generation unnecessary problems that's a that's a terrible mistake that's a horrible mistake i mean it's inevitable every generation does that but we have to try our best not to hand over to our you know children and grandchildren unnecessary problems that we created or the problems that we could not solve not because we couldn't but because we did not or problems that we even made worse you know why? Because they will have their own problems. So why do we have to, you know, pass on extra problems that are ours, that we fail to solve? And so that's the challenge of today, is how do you survive and grow and make life better? And how do you learn from the past so that you can do that and then how do you change teach the new generation from you know your mistakes and your successes and those of the past so that they don't repeat your mistakes and how do you don't not pass on to the future generations your mess and your problems that's the challenge of leadership and that is is important enough and that is that's a full life agenda. That's, that will keep you busy until you die. But th is there any other choice? That's why leadership is so important. There's no other way. Okay, look. Technology is changing. For sure. Human physiology maybe is changing. It is changing, but very slowly. Technology is changing very fast, very rapidly. Human physiology is changing, but slower pace. We know for sure that our IQ is becoming higher. People are becoming smarter. Uh, we're becoming healthier. We're living longer. There is less, there are fewer unsolvable diseases. We have more medications. Life expectancy is getting, you know, higher. So we are changing also physiologically. But on the psychological level, that's the big question. Are we changing on the psychological level? Will love change? It hasn't changed for I don't know, hundreds of thousands of years because it's part of human nature. I don't know if love will change. 
I don't know if love now is different than what love used to be 1,000 years ago. 2,000, 10,000. I don't think it will change. Listen, we're not the only creatures on this planet. Some creatures, some mammals at least, like us, have lived here tens of millions of years before we did. Look at them now. Does the relationship between a mother mammal and a baby, her child mammal, did that relationship change? It didn't change. Motherhood did not change. Fatherhood did not change. Hunting did not change. The mechanism or the need to eat did not change. The need to sleep did not change. The need to socialize and start a family did not change. So as long as human nature has not changed, the mechanics and the dynamics and the techniques of mobilizing human nature at a psychological level are the still the same. Are still the same. The technology and the tools are, the, are different. So before you could wait for your child to come home so that you can teach them a lesson. Now you can send them a text or you can call them by phone or by video call. You can now take care of your kid even they were, if they were like two continents away. If they were 15,000 miles away, you can still take care of your kids. I know people who have children who are studying abroad in very remote countries. It's like they're living together. Those people have in their dorms, wherever they're living, a video cam that's on all the time. And the parents have also a video cam that's installed in their home far away and the ca the video cam are open all the time so they see each other all the time and now with smartphone you don't even have to be in, in, at home to see that over through um, some application on your smartphone you could activate or look through any video cam you have and you can do FaceTime and connect and you know video calls so uh, so so by doing that they're still together they're still raising their kids they're giving them advice giving them psychological support motivating them mobilizing them Right? I mean, look at media and new media, how it's providing amazing tool to exercise leadership in the sense of mobilizing people. One post now, you know, if it, one small video, one post can go viral, could be watched by tens, if not hundreds of millions of people. And it could start a wave, huge changes in mechanisms of of mobilization but the core of mobilization is the same because it goes all goes to the to the to, to the fundamentals of human nature so things have changed but also many things have not changed good has not changed evil have not has not changed pain did not disappear suffering did not disappear smiling did not change Happiness did not change. Our eagerness to be happy did not change. Our need to be embracing others and to be embraced by others did not change. Care did not change. All these basic emotions did not change. Anger, hate, guilt, disappointment, euphoria, gratitude, saying thank you did not change. So we have to understand this reality and make sure that as we practice leadership, as we exercise leadership and as we teach leadership, we build, we integrate all this thinking into the way we approach leadership. As long as you have these three components in leadership, mobilization, people, good purpose. As long as you have these three components, then you're exercising leadership. The rest is techniques. The rest is te technology. The rest is adapting to whatever is more effective and pro efficient and productive in this time and age of technological advancement. But the core is the same. Mobilizing people so that they can have a better life. How? By solving their problems, facing their challenges, their fears the obstacles to their growth and by creating opportunities for progress for happiness for peace 
and for joy as long as peace and joy and happiness and love and hate and anger and hope did not change leadership will not change I change every day like every people I change every day at least I try to what's the point of learning if it's not about change if today I'm not better than yesterday I've just wasted a day if today I'm worse than yesterday it's more than wasting a day I have just went back I haven't learned I'm going to be repeating more prop more mistakes unnecessary mistakes so every single moment you learn at least you try to now is it easy it is so hard learning is so hard learning is so hard if you think of it every major lesson that you learned from life it came through pain it came through tra trauma small trauma middle-sized trauma big trauma just think of it if I ask you what are the biggest lessons that you acquired from life you'll tell me a few lessons if I ask you how did you learn these lessons I am sure there was a major significant experience in your life so learning is hard it's very hard it takes energy and you have to break old habits and you have to develop no new habits and you have to question yourself and you have to burn much of the dead wood you have to say this is dead wood this is this part of me is not required anymore it's very hard but what's the other alternative there's no other that's how we are we are learning creatures we're designed to learn we're designed to grow we're designed to be pioneers we're designed to innovate we're designed to create we're designed to be entrepreneurs we're designed to lead we're designed to face challenges we're designed to overcome we're designed to win against other people and against ourselves mainly against ourselves that's what we're designed we're designed to push our frontier further and further and farther we that's by design if you don't do that you'll be miserable why because you're living against your nature you're living in a jail in a prison we're designed to expand why are we going to mars we can't stop not going to mars or other planets and if we go to mars somebody will think okay let's go to you know somewhere outside our solar system and it's already being done now people are thinking about that it's we can't help it that's how we're designed to do and we have to do that so you and I that's our challenge every single day we have to change and as we change supposedly we should change to the better and that comes from learning and as we learn we have to put all of that learning so that we can make our lives better and we can make the lives of other people better now that's what all leadership is about that's what leadership is all about when you keep a, a mi open mind when you have courage when you are adaptive we're learning all the time so that you can improve yourself you mobilize yourself so that you become you live live life better you experience life in a more beautiful way even if it's pain and suffering and sorrow that's that is unavoidable like losing people like failure like disappointments that's part of human nature you know that's maybe even necessary for our development at least you do it in a more graceful and smarter and wiser way so that's self-leadership and when you help other people do that in their lives that's what exercising leadership is about so that's that's the story of mankind that's our story and that's the story of leadership continuous learning and continuous application of that learning in our life and in the life of others and that requires mobilization and leadership is about mobilization one of the fortunes of my life is that I've traveled I've lived in many countries I lived in the East and I lived in the West actually lived and I lived in the Far East and in the Middle East and in the West and I mean you name it from Hawaii to Asia I've been there like many people most people travel now so I lived but I, I traveled but I also lived and wherever I lived I learned 
and in my journeys when I go to my to 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 conduct my leadership programs to provide you know to to give keynote speeches at conferences and to hold my executive programs and attend leadership conferences and other kind of content you know entrepreneurship and strategy and policy making I learn from people I don't just share what I have learned from life from my research from you know what I've written in the books that I have authored I also learn from them and maybe I learn much more than what I you know I teach I take much more than when I give why because when you go to a new culture every single moment is a learning experience the smell is different the colors are different the way the food is different the way people dress is different the, the you know the, the code of conduct is different politeness is different mm. uh, protocol is different um, uh, habits are different practices are different folklore is different tradition is different and you're living through that every single moment and that's learning so one of the fortunes of my life is that because not I didn't just visit I actually lived in these countries so I've learned from all of that and what's inside of me is a combination of all of that so I have the practical the practicality the pragmatism of the West let me say the bullet point thinking of the West and the the uh, the way the the scientific thinking of the West the the the, the way the, the West builds its logic approaches understanding the way the West the West learns interprets things diagnoses things it's a thinking process and that helped me a lot and taught me a lot but I've also learned from the East where things are done in many ways in many aspects in a different way so I also learned from that so all these different approaches that emerge from different cultures all of them have something to teach and I've learned much of these things at least as much as I could I've learned from this and the combination of that is amazing because you see how we're all different and you know we want the same things but you also see how we express these things in different ways at least from the outside deep inside we all cry and we all laugh we all love and we all get angry and upset and hope and dream but the manifestation of that the expression of that is fascinatingly rich and in that richness there's so much intelligence so I've learned from the intelligence of India and China and the Middle East and Sri Lanka and Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan and Georgia and Armenia and Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan and Saudi Arabia and Yemen and Dubai and Qatar and Lebanon and Syria I learned from all of this and I also learned from Europe from France and from London and from Boston and New York and Los Angeles and I've learned from all of that and Canada and I've learned from all of these I've learned and they have all so much to offer now if you put all of this together it becomes fascinating fascinating and it enriches your life because it gives you means of appreciating and communicating and elaborating your thinking and it adds beauty and depth but as I said if you take it to the deepest level and that's one of the main things that I've learned especially as, as I conduct my you know my leadership programs that are very intense they go to the core of human being I mean we really go to the core absolute core inside 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 what I see in a fascinating way is how we're all the same how we're all the same because the same message about hope love leadership making life better dreams are the same everywhere and that's what makes 
this planet and this life and leadership so and this time of life this century so amazingly remarkable because you could not have done this 200 years ago you can't how many people traveled from you know Hawaii to China 300 years ago technologically it wasn't that feasible now you can do that not to mention of course what you see on you know smartphone TV media old media social media you know all the technology thing so it's fascinating journey and, and I think more and more people should do that and that's the message that I try to pass on is that there's so much to learn from all cultures East West in fact if you think of it there's no, there's no, there's no really East West because it's a sphere you know the, the earth is so where is East where is West where it's all relative it's a small planet anyway so the more you learn from everybody the richer you become and the more you can give others and that's what makes life busy, beautifully interesting, and unfortunately very short, because there's so much more to do. Thank you for listening to the Michael Cooley podcast. Please visit cooleyinstitute.com and send us an email. We would love to hear your comments and thoughts on this episode. And remember to follow Michael's continuous learning insights on social media.